Good morning, reefers. I'm Daniel, and today I want to talk about the top five mistakes that reefers make and some tips to avoid and correct them. So, number one mistake I think that everyone makes is they get into this hobby, and of course, everyone starts off with a small tank and then tries to jump up to a big tank before they got used to running a small tank. So, one of the things I would say is know the tank that you plan on setting up and really invest into that tank. You're gonna to wanna to give it time and think about it. Because also advice, if you're researching on a tank, your advice if you have a Nano is gonna be different than a system like this. This system here has a lot of water, um, there's a lot of refugiums, there's a lot of different things that are involved in here. So if I was giving myself advice versus someone in a Nano tank, it wouldn't be the same. Now it would sound the same, but that person may go astray and get frustrated with the hobby or do something stupid or buy equipment because they don't correctly understand. So number one uh, mistake and how to avoid it is do your research. Research your tank and like I said, know what you want. Get a skimmer rated for the tank and the type of fish you're gonna have, how many inhabitants you're gonna have. Um, that's the whole reason for the skimmers, for the bio load. So if you don't even have any fish in your reef and you're not feeding, there's no real point to get a massive skimmer. Um, so know what your equipment does. So research is plenty. Um, I never get tired of learning something new. So, and there's always an easier way to do something, new equipment, new techniques. Um, that's why I like to share on YouTube because I can give you guys something and then you can give me feedback and tell me something I may have not known, which is awesome. I always appreciate you guys throwing in a link to something or teaching me something. So I may not have all the answers all the time, but I know where to go get them if I need to find them. So all right, number two is beginners, man. People rush too much. They do things too quick, and nothing good in this hobby happens fast. So people try to change their tank, um, chasing parameters. And I tell people, slow down. If your tank's out of whack, your salinity's out of whack, do not try to correct it by doing some massive water changes. Um, a lot of people just want to like jump and just, oh, let me just lower my nitrates, I'm gonna do 500 water changes. And they rush and they throw their whole system off. One, there's salt, they don't give enough time to mix. Um, and they have all kinds of other issues that they're just rushing. They burn their corals trying to raise alkalinity or whatever. So, just to make it quick and simple, never rush. And don't stress out your corals. If they're already in a position of stress, and you're gonna go and send them back to the fresh water, uh, you know what I mean? Don't try to run your parameters too fast. So that's something really important that I've learned over the years. Go slow and, and really, really take your time with your tank. Um, so there you go. So there's number two. And <clears throat> don't try to overcorrect yourself. So all right, number three. Buying unnecessary equipment. Number three is, they're all, all these things are tied together. Part of rushing and part of buying unnecessary equipment is, you know, if people, their nitrates are high because they didn't let their tank cycle properly and they're adding fish too quickly and the bacteria can't keep up and catch up with the system because you're just changing too quickly. So people who do not cycle their tanks in the beginning I, I always find have problems later on down the road and it just makes your tank a little bit harder to maintain. So buying a denitrator, trying to quick add a turf scrubber, algae scrubber, um, a reactor. I mean, sometimes you just need to do your water testing and let your, your tank just situate. Uh, we, we tend to get a little crazy about our tanks and And we'll go out and spend a fortune on something that we don't necessarily need just because we are worried about some parameters our pH oh no you know someone wants to check a pH probe and check it out and they'll go like oh my pH probes crazy yeah that's why I don't use pH probes and I don't really rely on them because they do break they do get out of whack and all of a sudden you're dumping stuff in your tank over a faulty probe and you do not want that happening that is a bad problem um, that's why I want redundant equipment, two of everything. You know, before you go and crank up your heater, make sure your thermometer's working. Uh, a lot of people make mistakes, they panic, and they just go crazy right away, and they jump onto something. And 
I'm just here to tell you guys, slow down. Haste makes waste. Research is key. Ask advice. And back to my other point, ask advice for your tank and the system that you want. If you got an SPS system and someone has a softy tank, you're not gonna want advice from you're not gonna want to exchange advice really. Because your tank's gonna have different requirements, different lighting, different flow needs, all kinds of stuff. So um, and then number four I have for my top five mistakes are know your tank's levels. A lot of people, they walk away for too long, they don't test, and then all of a sudden their tank crashes. It just gets out of whack, there's an imbalance in their ecosystem, they're not pulling out the macro algae, and it's just growing, and then it's dying underneath, and it's releasing back into the system. And you're not doing your water changes, you're just, there's so many ways to let things get out of hand. So, my number four, one of the ways to correct that would be not only to know your tank's levels, but you want to create a routine. You want to make sure that you know what is using your calcium, how long it's being depleted out of your tank, how much you need to replace it, how often, and it really is just a whole lot. But you'll get to do it over time and it'll become easier. So writing stuff down makes it a lot easier. Dating, equipment on your tank, I always put a date on my filters and stuff. Let's see, did I do it this time? Yeah, there we go. So I know when they're used, how long I expect them, when they need to be changed. So creating a routine maintenance schedule for your tank is important. That way, like I said, you don't let it go out of whack. Know your levels. Alkalinity, calcium. Um, and I see a lot of people have a huge problem with Salinity. Salinity number one. Get a good reader. I use a couple different tools. I have this one right here, but I did break the glass off of it, um, so I replaced it. Refractometers work really well, but without a good calibration fluid, you can't even trust it. So if that's not calibrated correctly, you're going to be going crazy. And another thing, if your salinity is off, that's going to drop your calcium, it's going to drop your alkalinity, it's going to drop your magnesium. If you're using your salt and you're not dosing, and you're specifically using the salt mix just to, to replenish your nutrients, then you're in trouble if your salinity is low. That's one reason why I actually like to keep my salinity a little higher, because it packs in a little extra punch with the magnesium, calcium, alkalinity, especially when I'm making my mixes. So. That's important to me that I have them available for my corals, and they seem to be doing great with that. So I go 1.026, where most people's specific gravity is 2.5, and it may drop, may drop down. <laughs> so, and another thing, here's a bonus tip for you guys. I, I really just want to let you know is label everything. If you knew what was behind here you'd freak out but I label which is the transformer I label which is the plug can't really get under there but I should have opened this up if I wanted to but, eh. but you guys get the picture you really really have to label stuff from day one uh, mistake is if you got wires all under your tank and you forgot to label it Dude, you're in trouble when you have to replace something. That's why stickers, man. Uh, best Reefer's best friend, uh, right here. Dude, roll a masking tape and a permanent marker. I use this all the time. Label everything. I used to know a crazy old man. I was wondering why he would do that. But then I'm like, when you're busy, when you have a lot of ideas, when you're a person who's an overthinker, you start to forget your own ideas after a while. You just have too many thoughts in your head, so writing stuff down, keeping track, doesn't mean you're less of a person because you need a calendar, it means you're a better person for knowing that you're um, weak in the scheduling department. So I have a terrible problem with time because there's always too much to do and everything takes a lot longer than you think. Five trips to Lowe's sometimes when I should have just bought every part they had the first time. <laughs> or known exactly what I needed, but it's never that simple. It never is. So there you guys go. I hope you learned something from this video. I'm really excited to do tomorrow's video. It's going to be on palytoxin. 
I um, have a lot to tell you guys, warn you, um, but be safe. This hobby can be tricky sometimes. I don't want to scare you, but make sure you check out tomorrow's video on Palitoxin. And I have some new corals that I will be posting packs, and I'm going to do a special Danny's pack, which is going to be corals that I have overstock of, or frags that I made of, Super Montes, whatever they are, chalices, things that I've picked up, and I'm going to offer at a special price as my top choices. So thanks again, guys, for watching, and as always, happy reefing. Until next time.